peas soup, more soup. So where I put some beans in here. Hello again, I am Miranda. And last week I actually wound up getting a new pack. So I thought I would do a video on how to fit your backpack using stuff around your house. Let's get into it. Let's put this thing on. Uh, this is the REI Flash 45. It is a lightweight pack, so it's not designed to carry a lot of weight. So I'm going to put about 20 pounds of weight in here for the fitting process. Unlike some packs, this does not have an adjustable suspension system, meaning that the shoulder straps and the hip belt are a fixed size, but there are some packs that have adjustments. So if your pack has that, I would recommend taking your torso measurement and then using that to adjust the length of the straps for you. You can find some tutorials online for how to adjust the suspension system for your pack specifically. Um, and once you have that harness adjusted, you can move on to the next part, which is putting stuff in it. Cool. So it's generally recommended that you actually buy all your big items of gear first before you buy your pack, because then you know what size pack you need or like how much weight you need to carry. But some people don't do that. And so we're going to assume that I don't have any of my backpacking gear and I am planning on loading this up with just like stuff I can find around my house. The first step on your pack would be to unbuckle everything, loosen up all of the straps, just get it as big as possible. I was looking around my apartment to try and find what I could use as weight, and I realized that cans are perfect. One can of beans or pears or whatever is about equal to a pound. So my plan is actually to use 20 cans in my pack. Yeah, which I'm actually kind of excited about. Now I'm only putting about 20, a little over 20 pounds in this pack because it is a lightweight pack. It's not designed to carry a ton of weight. But if you expect that you'll be carrying a lot more than that, as I think many backpackers do, you can always put more weight into your bag, which could mean more cans of stuff. If you don't have 20 cans sitting around your house or apartment, you can always use a Nalgene. A 32 ounce Nalgene like this one, when it is full of water, weighs two pounds and nine ounces. You would need like seven of them. Someone do the math on that and tell me if I'm right. Now, I don't wanna just throw all these cans in this pack because that's not gonna give me an accurate understanding of how it'll fit when I have all my gear packed. So I'm gonna stuff something into the bottom of it that would be like a fake sleeping bag. So I have this floofy bed pillow. Get in there. Super. It's not exactly the same as having a sleeping bag in there, but it will do. And the next step is to fill the pack with cans. To do this, I'm gonna try and stack the cans as close to the back of the bag or the frame of the bag as possible, uh, because that's how you wanna pack your bag, is with like the heavier stuff kind of close to your spine and generally towards the middle of the pack. Great, let's get canning. Okay. I hope this works. Got a bunch of cans in this bag now. And I've got a big space back here. Yeah, and this big space is what I want to basically stuff full of something soft just to keep these cans from tipping away from the back of the bag. Maybe I'll use my sweatshirt. I might actually do it. Now that I got all my stuff in my backpack, I'm going to close it. I'm gonna lie it flat down on the ground and then I'm going to cinch all of the compression straps tight. <laughs> Great. So now I have my pack full of 20 pounds of cans. Let's get to fitting it. So I got my pack full of weight. There are a couple different ways to put your pack on, um, but basically just put it on. Uh, what I'm going to do is just put it on my knee like this and then grab the air preserved stirrup side of my shoulder. Full disclosure. I've never worn this pack before. This is truly my first time putting it on, which is kind of cool. So I have my pack on and is like currently sitting all on my shoulders. What I'm gonna do now is do up the hip belt and try and get as much weight as possible onto my hips. I can't tell, but my hips are right here. So that's where I'm trying to get this pack to sit. Awesome, just like that. And now that I have the hip belt, buckled. Um, most of the weight is on my hips and it means it's really loose in the shoulders. So now we need to adjust that because while we want 80% of the weight on my hips, my, I don't want to be like careening backwards, which is what I'm doing right now. So to do that, I'm going to tighten these shoulder straps just a little bit. 
And then I'll do the load lifters, which are these straps. You can see those. Uh, the load lifters basically help pull the weight forward on the pack. So you don't do that awkward fall backwards thing. So I'm gonna pull these just a little bit, just to the point where the weight comes forward. My sternum strap should cross at the hard bone at my chest. That's your sternum. Uh, this is gonna be a slightly different place for men and for women. For women, it tends to be a little bit higher, but it's basically like at your pits. So on this pack, these slide up and down and then buckle this. And then this gets tightened just a little bit, doesn't get tightened a ton. Now, right away, I can tell that this left strap is cutting into my shoulder a little bit. So I'm gonna loosen it just slightly. I do find that a lot of people end up having one shoulder strap that's slightly longer or one that's shorter because our bodies are not symmetric. If they were, we'd all be gods or just people. Yeah. What I'm going for here when I'm gonna be walking around in this, I want the majority of the weight from the pack going into my legs. So I want as much as I can on my hips and that's going to just let my legs carry that around. With the shoulder strap, I'm feeling for any hot spots, any areas where I feel like there's rubbing, where there's pinching, anything like that, and then we'll make some adjustments. We also want to ideally have the shoulder strap lie really flat against your shoulder, but you don't wanna have any puckering up like this, like that. We're kind of going for like a flat eye on your shoulders. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a stroll. Oh my God. Okay. I just walked around for a little while uh, to see how this pack feels. And I can definitely tell that I have some pinching in this shoulder strap here. And so to adjust that, I'm again, just going to loosen up this a little bit. And then from there, it means I'm going to have to adjust everything else. So now that I've loosened my shoulder straps, I am going backwards a little bit. So I'm going to tighten my load lifters. And then we'll adjust our sternum strap as well. Cool. Ooh, that's already way better. And stroll part two. Groovy. This already feels a lot better on my body. You will have to make adjustments as you're hiking. So if you're wearing a pack and you're like, I have to keep adjusting stuff, that's kind of normal as well. What we wanna avoid are those pain points, those like pressure points where you might feel like something is pinching. I do think it's important to keep in mind that carrying a backpack is not going to be as comfortable as not carrying a backpack. So some discomfort is expected. Yeah, anyway, cool. I hope this video was helpful and now you have an understanding of how to load your pack with some weight and size it to yourself at home. If you have any other suggestions for videos you'd like to see, I would love to hear them. Stay safe out there and hopefully I will see you soon in the wild. Bye friends, stay safe, have fun, be smart. I'm gonna hike this over to the pantry and unload it there.